Welcome back to CSM TV. We're back, and today we're going to do a little bit of time traveling. Uh, so, the last episode, if you watched on the Colt, uh, we got the engine pulled out, but before we even started on that, we started on some control arms. Uh, ran into a little snag, so go ahead, uh, let's get into it and uh, see where we messed up. Who wants to watch me do something stupid? Okay, so first upgrade we're going to get into are control arms. Uh, we've got some front control arms. These are from uh, Natfab. Comes with all the hardware. Grease comes with it. They are a factory Hyundai Elantra sized. So same thing that's in the car now. Should just be just a little bit lighter. Um, had these for a little while. I didn't want to upgrade because I hate doing upgrades in the middle of the season. Especially if the car is working how I want it to. So kind of held off on that until now. So we'll be putting those in. Uh, I got some new rears, which I have I have straight uh, tubular control arms in the back already. These got a nice bend in them. Um, I did see a little contact point on mine, on the straight ones that were hitting the frame rail just slightly, it looked like, which we're gonna try to get the squat out of the car anyways. But these were, uh, these were for sale and uh, well, actually for an auction, for a uh, a, a good uh, good cause to help Tim Zimmer out. He had a shop fire, so I was not mad at buying these at all, especially being the Volt control arms. These are a really nice piece. Those also come with all the all the paperwork, sticker stuff like that on installing those, which is really convenient. That's really nice. So. I do want to get the old control arms off the back. I'll compare them to the Volk ones uh, weight-wise, just because I'm curious. And I got the factory ones here that we can uh, we can compare as well. And one more reason I wanted to get back here, if you can see, look at the tire where it's sticking out on that side compared to this side. So if you can see that, uh, the passenger side sticking out just a slightly bit uh, compared to the driver. So I thought it was just misalignment with the uh, subframe when we did the all-wheel drive swap, but I got under the car and uh, took some measurements, and it looks like the control arms are just uh, the, on the passenger side are a little bit longer than the driver's side, which they're adjustable, so you need to adjust those back and uh, definitely get that lined up properly. So hopefully this thing can go in the proper spot and not be so sticking out so far which it's you can actually see it better with the slicks on because they're a little bit wider so yeah we're gonna adjust that and uh yeah we checked the alignment went ahead and did that So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get into it. All right, got the old arm out. Um, this is just a piece together kit. I think it's all all-star parts, maybe. It's been a while, but you have to buy everything separate. Arm, the jam nuts, uh, the spherical bearing, the ball joint, all separate, but I can throw those part numbers in the description if anybody's interested. And uh, yeah, they're a good piece. Uh, I think the Volk ones would be a little better. It looks quite a bit more heavy duty. So I'm assuming that's going to be a little bit, a uh, little more weight, which just, it's, it's fine, I guess. It's fine. But 
Speaking of weight, let's go ahead and weigh these things and uh, see see what we got here. Looks like we have three pounds. Do this one last because I think it's going to be heavier. All star arm. Two point six pounds and the Volk three if you can see three point eight. Ugh, gaining a little weight. Just like me. So I was just about to uh line this up, try to get this thing as close to the factory arm as possible for a good starting point and just Look at the adjustment in this thing. Jesus. Just for reference, uh, it looks like from about the center the bolt hole to the bottom ball joint, it looks like 17 inches to me. So looks like this one's pretty close. This one, however, was like quarter inch or quarter half, quarter inch out, I believe, which lines up with the way the tire was sticking out. So. I think I need to measure the bottom one and adjust that, but we'll go ahead and throw this lower one in. Actually, we're going to adjust the bottom, then throw the lower one in, and then we can do the other side. So let's get to it. All right, so counting the threads on the other end, uh, this is where it needs to be. The jam nut is where it needs to go. That's where the bar was. So I've got a little adjustment. there she is um, everything's still kind of loose just so you know when we need to adjust everything don't need to tighten everything up so this side's in need to move to this side um, and looks like we got to fix a little axle leak so we'll do that and uh, we'll be back with you we got both control arms in and the uh, axle seal it's fixed so done for the rear for now uh we'll have to make some adjustments and tighten everything up once we check the alignment now we need to do the front so easy install <laughs> never say it's an easy install dumbass just a straight bolt-in affair so Well, that's uh, that's not gonna come out. I knew I knew as soon as I saw the way it was in there, it wasn't gonna come out. I've been in that situation before. I flipped the bolt around at some point, so it comes out the uh, the incorrect way, I guess you'd say, from factory, and then flipped it back around for some reason. I don't. Who knows? 
OCD, who, whatever. But when it goes back in, it's going back the other way. So I can actually get that out with the trans in. It's not a big deal. I gotta pull the engine. Let's put that guy back in. So we'll pick up this part, which won't matter to you guys because you all see it at the same time. It's weird how YouTube works, isn't it? But yeah, we'll pull the engine and get the other control arms in. Whatever, I'm gonna stop talking. We'll, we'll pick it up next time. Okay, as you guys can see, uh, engine is out. Uh, I'm not sure where it's at on the timeline on YouTube because I'm trying to keep these videos all together just because it get weird if I just put them out and then I hate just not finishing something. So we're going to have to work around uh, doing the engine stuff and then doing this uh, control arm stuff. But now we can get our bolt out. But one thing I do want to do is get rid of this seam right here. Um, sticks out quite a bit. I actually hammered these in a bit. Uh, looks like they rubbed at some point, so I'll probably cut these off. And then I'm going to hammer this guy, this guy in, make sure we got all the uh, tire clearance. So I want to take care of that before we get the control arms in. So let's go ahead and get to it. So this doesn't look terrible. This is all nice hammered in. It turned out pretty decent. Down here, it's a little gross. So that's bad. That's, that's not great. But it's a bunch of layers of metal and weird angles. So I did the best I could uh, once, I, once I pulled the fender off. It's kind of hard to get off because the skirt is kind of sitting on the jack or the uh, quick jack. So... That's all right. Work with what we got. That should be plenty of room. It's going to start hitting the fender if we get that deep into it. So if that starts happening, we're going to have a big issue. So I'll go ahead and do the other side. Um, and then we can scuff and paint this, get the control arms in. So I'll go ahead and do that and bring you guys back in. Okay, wheel wheels are painted. Looking a bit better than, uh, than it was unpainted. So go ahead and check out this other side. Turned out maybe a little better. I can't really see. Hang on. How about that? Yeah, can't complain too much. Once uh, I got the paint on there, it really started to blend in. So we use uh, what I use a lot is this uh, low gloss black duplicolor engine paint. It really goes on good. This is favorite sort of paint. But anyways, in that they're not paying me for that. I would. I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even give them exposure, but it's good paint, so, you know. Anyways, with that side quest out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, pull these control arms.
Okay, so the only thing we need to swap out is this rear bushing on the control arm. It does come with uh, the hardware for that, or new hardware for that, and grease to grease those up. And he includes a new ball joint, which he already had installed on the, or maybe I installed those. I don't remember. But it comes with new ball joints, new hardware, so we'll double check the hardware before we install it. It is a factory size Hyundai Elantra control arm, which is a popular upgrade for the Colt, and that's what this control arm is. So with the Hyundai Elantra one, it gives you a bolt-in ball joint and a little extra length in this area uh, to make up for... Uh, some positive camber it'll give you if you throw in Mitsubishi Expo Knuckles, which is another upgrade. So you can put five lug on the car, get rid of the captured rotor, stuff like that. So it gets real hairy with the Colts on the front suspension wise. But this same thing I have, just a little lighter. And we will go ahead and uh, throw it on the scale and see what kind of weight differences we have. I know I did it in another video where I... Uh, test fit these control arms for Paul before they went into production but we'll do it again just because why not it's already out let's do it so we'll get those on the scale and then we can go ahead and install them okay we'll go to the stock arm first eight point three and the nat fab arm It's two pound weight saving, 6.2. So I fumbled around with that bolt for a while, trying to get it to go in the uh, incorrect way. I, for, in this control arm, I just couldn't get it to work. I tried a bunch of different angles, and it just wasn't having it. I couldn't get enough of it in there to go straight in, to, to go the incorrect way in. So I, I put it in the right way, and hopefully... Uh, we don't have to pull this bolt back out with the engine back in. If we do, uh, we'll figure it out at that, at that time. Control arms are in, well, as much as in as they can get in the uh, current state of the car. Been kind of holding on this video for a little while, hoping to get everything buttoned up, get the car back on the ground, which had some delays on some things, so it, it happens. It's automotive related, of course it's going to have problems. So, yeah, uh, didn't work out the way I was hoping, which is fine. We'll just have to throw it in another video. We'll show the alignment. That was one thing I wanted to show just to compare the control arms, you know, being a new product and uh, what Paul does looks, everything looks amazing. It fits amazing. So I did want to show that off a little bit, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. So got a bunch of really cool stuff coming up soon. So stay tuned and uh, we will see you on the next one.